This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 17 on the 11th of July 2013, an interview with Songdrop. It's fantastic to have you here on the One to One Show today, uh, Brittany Bien, uh, CEO and co-founder of the company Songdrop. So hi, Brittany, and how's it going today? It's, it's going well, thanks. Um, we are just kind of running through a bunch of new stuff, yeah. um, trying to get everything out as quickly as possible. That's great. And uh, as usual for a startup. So uh, talk me through, first of all, uh, what is Songdrop for anybody that hasn't heard about it before? Uh, just a quick elevator pitch. Sure. Uh, Songdrop is a music player for the internet. So it's a way to play music from loads of free services. So things like YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Vimeo, Vivo, any MP3s that are stored on blogs. Yeah. You can play them all back from our website, which means you can bring together the music from all of these places and put them in one player. That's great. And uh, looking at uh, how you started out, uh, so how long has the company been around and when did you have the first uh, idea for uh, Songdrop and how did that evolve from there? Sure. Um, so we had the idea for Songdrop about a year and a bit ago, uh, which and it really came out of frustration. Um, I was trying to make playlists of music from like catalog songs, so things on Spotify and remixes from SoundCloud, yeah. and I couldn't find a way to do it. And at the time, I was also working on a music blog and would get, we'd get loads of demos in. So we'd have, you know, I'd have like 20 tabs of like random links open and my browser would crash constantly. So we were yeah. like, this is not fun for anyone. And one day I just sent uh, James, who's our designer and co-founder, a message saying, I have this idea for a thing. What do you think about it? It could solve some of the problems we've been having. Um, and from there, within about two days, I think, we sort of scoped out the first version of the website, did a bunch of wireframes, put it together, and got started building something as quickly as we could. Right. Um, so we built a prototype version in the sort of late spring, early summer of last year, uh, did a tech pitch 4.5 to kind of launch the prototype uh, yeah. and get some feedback from sort of investors and the general startup community to see what they had to say about it. Yeah. Um, and we worked on that for about six months, that prototype, just kind of refining the offering and figuring out what we were doing. And then we raised around a round of funding early this year um, and relaunched the website uh, with a new look and yeah. far more functionality. Yeah. And so now we're kind of just full steam ahead with that. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at how you... Um it, you know, how you approached the design of the of the site of course that's a big part of it uh, yeah. what were the main you know the key points for you that you wanted to to stick to and you wanted to deliver uh, in the sure. design of songdrop um for us we were really interested in uh getting away from this concept of the spreadsheet of music um i think we've got all these really great ideas around and there's all this access and all these songs and all these videos and what we found is that everyone was just taking the exact same approach to how they delivered on that. And you got a big list of music. Or if, you know, someone was getting really crazy, you got some album art somewhere. And that was kind of the extent of creativity around it. And we yeah. thought that that was a hugely missed opportunity. Um, music is a lot more than just, um, you know, one audio file or one song. Uh, there's a real tactile thing around that. So one thing we wanted to make sure we did was kind of bring in uh, some kind of element of the physical to it as well. Yeah. And that's why we've turned um, all those, you know, we take the image, we turn it into a picture disc basically, and it spins and it moves around. And it's to really try and harken back to um, a bigger thing than just a bunch of pixels really. Yeah. Um, and James did a really amazing job with that. And it's, it's really informed everything we do coming from there. And having that really strong design sensibility makes it a lot easier for us to continue to grow especially from a visual standpoint. Yeah, and we're talking the other day about you know the, the fact that you have a, a growing audience worldwide. Uh, you know, you yeah. have a, a big jump in Japan, for example, which uh, you know is something that you want to try and capitalize on, of course. And uh, but looking at, um, for example, you have services like YouTube, SoundCloud, Vivo, and uh, different uh, integrations on the side. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering about the geographical side of things as well, because I know that, for example, some Vivo videos may not be available in a different country, sure. and the same for YouTube. So how how do you deal with that? Is is it a, is a big headache for you? Um, it's not too big of a headache for us. Um, it's a headache for anyone who lives in Germany, um, yeah. <laughs> but you thank Gemma for that. Um, 
And what we've done is kind of nothing with that, um, yeah. where, where we are leaving it up to the service providers to define those things. We don't really want to step on anyone's toes there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people we've been told have been using a number of different sort of proxy services in order to get around that. So we'll, we'll yeah. leave that to the user. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It makes sense. And so looking at the, how you want to evolve the service, uh, you know, there's a strong social component. Uh, there's a, a, a discovery component on, on finding music, uh, also based on what your friends are sharing. Uh, you can look at pop popular drops, uh, what's what's trending on the service as well. and uh, But looking at uh, what you're going to organize around the service, because of course it's based on content that is freely available, uh, what are your views on how you're going to uh, expand the service and eventually monetize it? Sure. Um, we are looking into mobile now. Yeah. Um, we, we really want to refine the, the web application so that it's the best possible thing it can be. So we kind of work on that regularly, but now our real focus is on mobile. So we'll have um, a sort of standard song drop app out. It's in testing right now. So hopefully, yeah, pretty good. fingers crossed, it will, be, um, it will be available sometime at the end of this month in the App Store. Yeah. Um, and once we kind of get to grips with that, we're going to start working on some other new things that we can sort of see that come around that. So we're going to look at new ways to experience music that's freely available online. So rather than have to worry so much about catalogs and have to have such tight margins, we can actually do a lot of innovation and a lot of exploring Absolutely. around how people listen. So we've got two, two new things in the pipeline that will be coming out soon. Um, one of them is really to do with um, kind of location-based group listening. So I hope that wasn't yep. too many buzzwords, um, but um, <laughs> kind of bringing back um, – the feeling of people playing music together. And it's also going to be a way to kind of get everyone away from the stereo at house parties. Yeah. Uh, and we're also looking at some new ways to innovate on playlisting um, and new ways that we can sort of do a better job of sending music to people um, and make that a nicer experience. And we're hoping to have some of those things live at the end of the summer. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at the evolution of how... Uh, Know, the service uh, might, might go in the future. Do, do you think, you know, are you 100% interested in just uh, the, the free side of music? Because, of course, it's, it's a huge amount of music out there and it's uh, quite a mission yeah. to organize it. Or, or would you think that in the long term you might uh, end up with some integration with paid for services as well? I think for now we'd really like to stick to the free services. Right. Um, for us, the, the line we're taking is that, you know, we, we think the API for music already exists. Um, it is the whole internet. There's tons of music out there. Um, what what really needs to happen is the kind of metadata around that needs to improve yeah. and the sort of general information about where that music exists needs to get better. And we're trying to help do that. And we're trying to inform that. And as, as we gather more information and as more people use our service, uh, the more we can hopefully push some of that information out through an API. Yeah. And uh, also uh, it's important to talk about the, uh, both the Google Chrome app that you have and the uh, sort of the, uh, the song drop uh, bookmark which is a little bit like the yeah. instapaper bookmark in the sense that uh, you can click on it and then it automatically pulls uh, whatever mp3 or track is is embedded in a particular uh, web page or blog and so how, how are you seeing the adoption of those because of course it's that's an, a very interesting proposition for people that are browsing through a lot of blogs and a lot of music to actually m manage to organize it and keep a record of where they've been yeah um adoption of that has been very good um it's probably around 90 percent of our users install it and right. the, you know, that's, that's kind of the only way for a bit, it was the only way you could actually mu add music to the site. Yeah. Um, we've since integrated YouTube and SoundCloud search in inside of our website. Yeah. Um, but I, I think for us, it's really important to be able to just say, you know, I heard this song just now on YouTube or on SoundCloud or Bandcamp and I want to keep it somewhere. Um, it's very difficult to, to do that right now, not using something like our service. Yeah. Um, you know, you end up, you lose loads of music. And, and I used to do that all the time. Yeah. And it drives me insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, when you're, you're sitting there and you're like, I heard this song the other day and it was really good. Yeah. My browser crashed. How am I going to find it? Um, you know, and hopefully we've, we've stopped that problem for a few people other than ourselves. That's great. That's very really cool. And uh, looking at, uh, you know, we're talking about the international market earlier when I mentioned Japan briefly. Uh, there are a lot of territories where paid for services are still either non-existent or in their infancy and uh, of course price points are a big concern because different economies have different you yeah. know uh, uh, possibilities as to what they can pay for, for music you know it's already 
uh, amazing in some territories if people can actually afford to get uh, a device to access the internet or, or have access to the internet uh, in the first place. So uh, how do you see that playing into the into the company and do, do you feel like that's a, a potential uh, field for, of expansion for you guys as well? Yeah, it is. Um, we are, we're very interested in looking in the markets that are notoriously difficult uh, to license in and markets that are very difficult to penetrate. Yeah. Uh, either because the, the infrastructure is lacking or um, the sort of local licensing bodies don't want to play ball with anyone. Um, and because we can sit outside of those things, uh, it's something we're certainly looking to do. Um, so we're currently exploring a number of options. Um, and that's outside of Japan. You know, we're looking to India and Russia um, in addition to South America. Um, yeah. We're in the Telefonica Accelerator Waiver right now. And they obviously have a very large presence in South America. So it's, it's a place we're really interested in looking to move and localize for. That's great. And finally, uh, of course, not to put you on the spot, but in terms of uh, the iOS, do you think it's going to be like Q3 or, uh, or uh, what are you thinking about? Yeah, we, we're hoping it's good to go at the end of this month. Okay. I say, nice. with, I say with great. Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a lot of hope. <laughs> Um, and it, of course that is, you know, it will be ready, but yeah. it's, it's always pending Apple's approval process and of course. we may have a pixel in the wrong place. So you got to yeah. worry about you that. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You can't guarantee, uh, of course, as, as usual, the approval of apps at all. Uh, I've, I've been there. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, uh, thanks so much. And the website is uh, songdrop.com. Uh, uh, you can also contact them on Twitter. Uh, the handle is a song drop app. So check out the website. And if you have any feedback, I'm sure you can drop them a tweet and, uh, uh, they'll, I'm sure they will respond or if you have any other businessy inquiry I'm sure you can find contact details on songdrop.com uh, thanks so much Brittany it was great thank having you on the show nice to speak to you thank you cheers if you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com. 